see is when I find myself thanking him for doing the dishes. Thanking him like he's doing me a favor when I cooked the damn meal and we both ate it. He bought it and he wants you to know it. Yeah, his time's supposed to be more valuable than yours. You've heard it so much you start to believe it. Well, why is it so hard for them to take us seriously? For take ourselves seriously. It's not feminine. You don't get taken to dinner for taking yourself seriously. Yes, but is that wrong? You don't have a choice. He makes more money than you, honey. He also has a ready-made babysitter. That's one of the reasons I don't want to have children. It takes such a chunk out of your life. Eighteen years, I can testify to it. Yeah, but it was a rewarding 18 years, wasn't it? Well, but it shouldn't be your whole life. Well, I think there's something special between a mother and a children. Dirty diapers. <laughs> I don't see why men can't share the responsibilities. I mean, isn't that why we have families? Are you really saying you're completely happy with the way having children affected your life? Well, I know I love them. I'd certainly rather have them than not. Peter gets nauseated changing diapers, so he never, ever does it. To tell you the truth, I'm not that crazy about it myself. But you do it. Hey, I gotta go. Hey, where are you going? It's early. My son Stevie's in a play. I promised I'll be there. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye.
You need some help? Yeah, would you, honey? I got an awful lot to do in the kitchen floor. What do you want me to do? Well, just pick up a few of these things, huh? Could you run the vacuum over the rug? Yeah. Here, this is Stevie's. Anything else that doesn't belong here, just throw it in any room for now. I should probably start taking a shower, so. Where's this go? Playroom, I'll take it. Whose skates are these? Give them to me. Yeah, here, why don't you take that? You know, the whole point of you helping me is for you to do it, not me. How does this house get in a mess like this, anyway? If I ran my office like this, I'd never get anything done. Get that way because everybody leaves everything around, expects me to pick up after them. Why don't you talk to the kids about this? Not only the kids. Well, no, Mrs. Perkins. Well, why don't you just try cleaning the house for a week? You know, you have no idea what goes into it. Honey, I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun, but I got enough important things to do already. <laughs> well, if I didn't get stuck with all these fun things, I might have a couple of important things to do, too. Karen! The vacuum cleaner doesn't work! How do you make this work? You press the on switch. Where's the on switch? On the bottom. I don't want you to do this. I'll just take a shot, okay? Oh. Would you open the wine? Mm -hmm. That's too much vinegar in there, right? What do you mean? Can you do something about it? What? Well, come on, sir. Oh, right. All right, Tom. Well, that's perfectly fine. Do you like some more beef, Mr. Stafford? Tom, there's nothing wrong with what you're saying. It sounds great in the courtroom, but realistically speaking, until someone builds a better mousetrap, there's just nothing more practical than those offshore drilling platforms. Well, I can't deny the fact that we certainly need the oil. There's more than that. Economics dictates that we explore every avenue. But if you start changing nature, can you put her back together again? Well, we've learned from our mistakes in the past. Not only can we put her back together again, I think we can improve upon it. Would you pass me some of those carrots, please? Sure. Would you like anything else? Oh, no, 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 thank you. Tom, if you can convince the businessman that there's profit in clean air, for example, will you get your clean air? Not before. Surely the businessman has to breathe, too. Well, that's quite true. But he has to eat as well. Isn't there some practical solution? One in which we could all share the responsibility? Listen, I gotta warn you about my wife. Ever since she started back to school, she thinks she's carrying nation. I mean, you, you crusaded the drop of an axe, huh? Tom, I'm just trying to make a point. And I'd like to hear it. Mr. Stocker, isn't this oil crisis really a deception? I mean, we have this shortage here at home. But at the same time, the oil companies are exporting it abroad. And at a very high profit. They seem to have a, a vast control over our... Mommy. Um, what is it? I want to talk to you. Well, you're interrupting me, honey. Is it important? I can't find my pajama tops. Excuse me. Alton, I understand the thrust of your argument. And it's a valid point. It's a question of economics, Tom. Everything, basically, is economic. Not now. I've got an exam tomorrow. I've got a paper due. But it's the only thing I have to work to school tomorrow. Nobody did the ironing this week. Why don't you do the ironing if it bothers you? Mother, I don't have the time. Well, honey, do you think I do? Okay. Get me a needle and thread. I'll sell it.
Go tell your father. But they will hit me hard. They will like women like me. They will like dogs. Okay, now what's going on? Why did anybody do the dishes tonight? Nobody told me. What? Well, do I have to tell you everything? Don't you see they have to be done? Tom! I put my fingers in my toes. Did not. Tom! Honey, I'm right in the middle of a brief. Now, do I have to come running out? Look, I'm not asking for a great deal. Just an hour or so to myself with no interruptions, and you were supposed to hold the fort but tonight. But I'm reviewing the Rodriguez briefs. I think I got a case. If you kids have any problems, you go to your father. I've got an exam and a paper due tomorrow. All right, now, Mommy's got her homework, okay? about this thing. Where are the cops? They're all clean cops. You know what it is? It's another one of those things. I mean, it's not going to bring any money in, but it's just, it's the right thing to do, you know what I mean? Okay, wait a minute. What do you think I ought to do? Tom, I can't discuss it right now. <laughs> this is important. I might be at the crossroads of my career. Well, could you just stay there for another hour? Now, I haven't wanted to say anything to you, but ever since you started back to school, I mean, especially since you've been going to work, can you stop that just for a minute, please? Now, ever since you've gone back to school, ever since you've been with these ladies' meetings, there's something happening, Karen. I don't know what it is, but you're different. You've changed. You want to go through that now? I want to go through it now. That's right. I don't like what's happening. Don't forget to write an open planetarium, yeah, Mom. Okay, I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be fair with you, Karen, but, but look at this mess. Look at this kitchen. That's filth. That's incredible. Tom, I wasn't the only one that had dinner in there. Well, why don't you make the kids clean it up? Well, why don't you try making them do it for a change? Oh, Karen, can't you even control your own kids? My kids? But you're the mother. You're with them all the time. It's your responsibility. Well, why don't you try sharing some of that responsibility? Believe me, I could do better than this. I think I've just run away from home. Hi, Mr. Chairman. How are you? How are you? Good. Listen, I'm expecting my wife. Oh, she's she... right over there at table A. Oh, good. Enjoy your lunch. Hi. Did you order us a drink? No. I, I was waiting for you. Sam, while you're there, two scotch and waters. Oh, you look nice today. It's pretty color. Thanks. All right. Now, you ready to tell me what this is all about? I'll try. When I married you, Everything that I wanted to be, I, I put into you. I let you become us. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, that's what a marriage is all about, and it's a partnership, right? It's a team where Mr. and Mrs. Chandler. But who am I? You're my wife. Well, that's it. You see, I, I have no identity apart from you. I'm Tom's wife. If we go to a party or a place like this, that's it. I'm Tom's wife. I feel like a window dressing. Here they are, Mr. Chandler. I can recommend the roast beef today. It's excellent. Well, that sounds like a winner, Sam. You know what you want, honey? Listen, you like fish. They got a great red snapper here. Thank you. Uh, bring me the red snapper, Sam. And make my roast beef good and rare, okay? Here. Have a drink. I'm 36 years old. I'm getting older. But I'm not growing. I don't think that's a scotch I usually get here. Are you listening to me? Yes, you said uh, you're 36 years old, you're getting older, and you're not growing. Yeah, so you're getting older. I mean, we're all getting older. One of these days, I'm going to wake up, and I'm going to be an old lady. And it's going to be too late. Too late for what? I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. It just seems that most of my life has been spent doing everything for everybody else but me. You realize that by the time I make the beds in the morning and I do the cooking and I go to the market and I drop the kids off. I'm the care of if you what, what I'm trying to say is but by the time I finish doing what's expected of me, I don't even have time to read a book. You may recall that last year I got you some day help. What, what that lady, what was her name? Was this? That's only a small part of it. I'm still everybody's nursemaid. Well, what, what do you want? I want more out of life than that. I just didn't know you felt this strong about it. You didn't. Well, maybe that says it better than anything else. Because I've been trying to tell you for a long time. Now, listen to me, Karen. You told me that you wanted to go to school. And I didn't object to that, did I? I mean, you're in school. I'll tell you something else. If you want to study law, be my guest. I'd welcome a little competition. But as far as all this other garbage is concerned... I'm not trying to compete with you. I'm trying to be me. At the expense of a marriage? A marriage with one and a half people? That's no marriage. I don't know. Maybe I'm a little slow. Maybe... Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe I haven't taken the time to look at things from your point of view. But I don't understand all this. I mean, I've always tried to give you everything I could possibly give you, Karen. I've shared everything with you. I have never kept any secrets from you. Damn it, I've tried to be a good husband, and I just, I, I just think I deserve better than this. I'm sorry. I see. What about the kids? I'll talk to them. And I'll try to explain things to them. Honey, listen. Why don't I try to take some time off? And, and, and would it help if we went away someplace, maybe make a trip, just the two of us? I won't do it. I have to be alone. Without you. And without the kids. Is that rare enough, Mr. Chandler? Oh, that's that's, that's beautiful, Sam. That's just beautiful. Yeah, I made myself a sandwich. 
Oh, honey, that hand is weeks old. I thought I threw it out. Why didn't you heat up the lamp? Oh, I thought maybe you wanted that for lunch or something. Karen, you don't have to punish yourself. You haven't done anything wrong. I haven't. No. Well, you take care of yourself, girl. What am I trying to prove? You're trying to stand on your own a little. It's hard. All I know is that my children are motherless. I'm wandering the streets terrified. And I don't know what my husband's thinking. For what? Lighten up, sweetie. You don't have to solve everything tonight. Gwen, I've got no resources. I... I feel about as stale as this piece of bread. What? The bread, too? Yuck. When I'm not sure that I'm capable of functioning on my own. Of course you are. It's not easy being a woman alone. It makes people nervous. When I was divorced, my husband was asked out to dinner three or four nights a week. Me, I was a blight on the environment, like an unrecycled beer can. Why do you get used to it? How? I work, I get child support, I take a class here and there, and I eat. It's not so bad. Listen, it's a lot better than it was before. You'll feel better when you eat. Thanks. Oh, wait till you taste it. Yes, that'll be it. Will that be cash or charge? Charge. Thank you. Credit card, $78.60, All right. Miss, I'm sorry, we can't use this. The account has been canceled. What? The account is no longer valid. Well, that's impossible. I've been shopping here for years. Are you sure? Uh, well, I'm sorry. I just called and checked, and it apparently has been canceled. Well, will you be wanting the things anyway? I, no, I, I think I'll hold on to what I have. Sorry. Carol, why should I pay your bills? No, I mean, you want to be responsible for yourself? Okay, don't charge things to me. Come, please, just until I get on my feet. Look, you just be responsible for yourself, Karen. I'll be responsible for me. Now, you're completely on your own. That's the way you wanted it, and you got it. I can't talk to no one. I try. I'm busy. Never realized I was being paid to be a wife. Maybe your salary for services rendered. Cook, dishwasher, lover, maid, chauffeur, nurse, shoulder to cry on. Not necessarily in that order. You married too young to be skilled in anything else. Now, there's got to be another way. Unemployment insurance? You quit, you've got to be fired for that. Look at me. I put in 12 years. My alimony works into a fast 2700 a year. I should be on welfare. That's why you've got to make sure you get a good lawyer. Well, yeah, Tom was right. I walked out. I made that decision. What i got to do now is go out and get a job, right? Oh, don't work too hard. When I started making as much money as my ex, I almost lost my alimony. Hello. My name is Karen Chandler. I have an appointment with Mrs. Freeman. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, please send this form out. Would you please sit down? Do you need a pen? Yeah, thank you. Where it says typing speed, you've left a blank. Yes, well, I, I have a lot of trouble with typing. Steno? No. Just what sort of job did you have in mind? Well, I'm majoring in art history, and I thought perhaps something to do with art? Uh, like what? Curator of the art museum? I'm sorry. Without your basic stenographic skills, I don't think we can help you. In your ad, you said 
You said interesting jobs in broadcasting, publishing, advertising? Well, certainly, but only with your basic stenographic skills. Does everyone have to be a secretary? I can't send you up for anything with a record like this. You're not exactly overqualified, you know. No, I, I realize that. I... Do you have any suggestions? I, I really need a job. You say you're married. Yes and no. I, I am separate from my husband. Well, I'm going to level with you. I can tell by looking at you that you're determined enough to do a good job and stick with it. But an employer paying out good money wants a track record. Do you follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Don't tell them that you've left your husband. They'll think you're looking for another one and you'll quit as soon as you find one. Don't tell them you're going to school. Tell them you've graduated. They won't check. Make up a company. You must have a friend who has an address you can use. Tell them you've worked there for several years. Make up references. I can't go around lying. This isn't your kitchen. This is the business world. You'll be up against men and women who'll be more than anxious to take your job away from you. So if you're serious, really serious about getting a decent job, you'd better be prepared to fight for it. And that includes lying. That's right. Thomas and Sons printing. Three years, huh? Mm-hmm. Maybe you're overqualified. Oh, well, that's all right. I don't mind. These galleys have to be at the printer this afternoon before three o'clock. And while you're there, fine, I'd like to play. You mean I have to show I'm coming yet. And then I want you to call the binary and... Are you still with me? Yes. Yeah. By the way, it's a total chaos here all the time. But you will get used to it. We all do. Did Mrs. Goodrich say what she did about dinner? No. Did you look in the oven? Maybe she put it in there to keep warm. Well, she didn't cook any dinner. I don't understand that. She knew she was going to leave. What's the matter with that woman? Well, that's the way she is, Dad. She's a real dope. Well, it looks like we're on our own, gang. Here come the frozen dinners. What happened to the frozen dinners? <laughs> Who did the shopping this week? How are we supposed to know all that stuff? When's Mom coming back? Mommy went out to Africa on a big game hunt. And uh, she can't get back till she gets out of the jungle. Of course, if she gets eaten by a lion, she'll never come back. Is that true? Of course not, silly. Hey, I found some. Julie, I wanted to take a thought of me. Too long, Pop. What if we bought it? <laughs> I could use a little help, you know? What do you want us to do? Don't ask me. I don't know. Just does it, do I have to tell you everything, Julie? You're starting to sound like Mom. Daddy, when's mine coming back? I don't know, son. Listen, I, I, why don't we call the pizza place? Do you like pizza? No way. I'll just have cereal. Pizza's for dinner? Where's Mommy? Mom found some other kids that she liked better than us. They elected her their mom, and now we don't have her anymore. All right, that's enough, David, okay? They were on the wrong stock paper. You weren't here, and I wasn't sure what you wanted me to do with them, so I sent them back. What kind of a paper did they print on? 16 instead of 30 weight. Oh, am I glad you know what you're doing? Could have been a disaster. Karen Chandler? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to get more than this. And what about your deductions? Federal, state tax, FICA, that's Social Security. 
your unemployment, your uh... old age. Didn't you ever get a check before? No. He's a little stuff. He'll do the ball necessary. He's dead. Mom's here. Sasha. 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 Hi. Hi. Mm. When we get the book after everyone else is through with it, and we decide how many pages it should be. Oh, this is great. Go with the maple syrup. And then what kind of print to use? Hey. Wait a minute, why'd you ask her to get the syrup? Why didn't you get it yourself? What? Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. My ears hear things they didn't use to. But is she supposed to get you the syrup because she's your younger sister? She's always bossing you around. David, just because she's younger and she happens to be a girl, that doesn't make her use life. Oh, Mom. Well, you've got to learn to do these things yourself. And Julie, you have to learn the difference between an obligation and a favor. You see what you got me doing, don't you? I never thought I'd be worried about dishpan hands. <laughs> I'll get you some lotion. Tom. Hand me that glass one. I've been thinking about taking Julie to live with me. How would you feel about that? Well, I didn't know it mattered how I felt. Well, of course it matters. But I'm still a family. Oh, really? Well, that's news to me. You don't give an inch, do you? Hey, Julie wants to go live with you. I'm not going to stand that way. It's her decision to make. How's that? Okay. You seem to be managing very well here, huh? Oh, I'm thinking about hiring myself out as a maid. How are you doing? Okay. You know, as a matter of fact, it's been very interesting. It's not only the job, it's just... It's working together with professional people and that whole experience. It's, I think you'd be very proud of me. I bet you're just the queen of the water cooler, aren't you? <laughs> well, Karen, I think about you all the time. I admire you so much. You know, what you did and all. Oh, yes, Karen. You have been a hot gossip item for the past two weeks. How'd you do it? How oh, I envy you. Oh, I'm stuck here the rest of my life. Where did you get the nerve, Karen? Girl, did you hear about Betty McKay and Warren Novak? Well, Ham, how could they? Mm -hmm. And Marsha Hammond, her son? He was arrested for peddling drugs. They went right into the house. Well, what, well, didn't they arrest Kathy's daughter, too? No, no, no. That was for a curfew violation. Oh, curfew. <laughs> what about you, Karen? Any new men in your life? Oh, Hazel, you know that new doctor you sent me to? He gave me a prescription for practically everything. <laughs> Didn't I tell you? When there's another one that can make you lose five pounds a week. Guaranteed. Ronnie, stop it now. Stop hitting her. Just give it back. I think he's uh, supposed to inject you with a hormone from a, a pregnant monkey or something. <laughs> Karen, you're not leaving. Uh oh, we're dying to hear more. Oh, I've got to go. It's getting late, Pam. Stevie, come on. We envy you. We really do. Well, how about that?
I've been wondering, how would you feel if I took Julie to live with me in the city? Well, what about Stevie and me? Well, I thought you'd probably want to stay with Dad, but if you want to come... Why don't you just come home? I can't. But why? Because Daddy and I can't live together right now. Aren't you still our mommy? Of course I am. No, she's not. You don't love us. David. I love you, Mom. This is Alex Shield. He did the illustrations you're working on. Gee, I love your work. Oh, thank you very much. Well, why don't we make up a list of things that have to be done, and then we can divide it up evenly. And rotating so nobody has to do too much of any one thing. Yeah, exactly. Right, Julie? Now, let me get this straight. The idea is... Equal rights for everybody, right? Right. Well, I think kids should have rights, too. Well, of course they should. Like what? Well, parents shouldn't have the right to hassle kids. What do you mean, hassle? A kid's a person, too. Parents shouldn't have the right to tell them what to do all the time. We don't. Oh, no. How about go clean up your room? I don't tell you to go clean up your room. My room is neat. Yours is messy. So? Maybe you like yours neat. Maybe we like ours messy. Democracy. We're going to need the Board of Health. They've got a point. You know, I don't think adults should be able to say like, Rhea, go get my glasses, but I'm right in the middle of something myself. Maybe what I'm doing is just as important to me as what you're doing is to you. You started a slave revolt. Yeah, maybe I did. Okay, how does this sound? We'll all take turns doing the dishes, right? But the one who's doing the cooking doesn't have to do the dishes that night. Hello? Hi. Hi. now. How do you like your steak? Medium. How about burned on the outside and rare on the inside? Fine. That's how they're coming out. <laughs> Smells good. You know, I can tell all there is to know about a woman by looking at her feet. Ken? Mm hmm? Woman's feet always give her away. <laughs> well, if you don't mind, I, I'm not quite ready to give myself away yet. What are you afraid of? I, I wanted to ask you, do you do the stories as well as the illustrations for the book? Yeah. You know, my son Stevie just loves your work. He'd really be thrilled to know I met you. Come here. I'm not going to hurt you. You do this often? What? Have girls up here for steaks and salad. <laughs> what difference does that make? None. It just seems very smooth. You know, I think the trouble begins with people when they start worrying about the times they're not together rather than enjoying the times they are. Now, I mean, I'm interested in non-possessive, non-exclusive relationships. So, see, you you don't have anything to worry about. I, I'm sorry. I, 
I just haven't been out on a date since... I can't remember when. <laughs> well, how do you like it? I... I'm not sure. Mrs. Chandler, it's so late in the year. You've been doing so well. But because of my job, I just can't carry all those units. Surely there must be some way. I mean, after all the time you've put in, just let it all go. Oh, well, I won't let it go. I'll make it up next semester. I certainly hope so. You're an excellent student, Mrs. Chandler. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. So, day after day, the cat sat in front of the fish tank, staring at the cat. Hour after hour. And all this time, the fish completely ignored the cat. I don't know what's the matter with that fish, thought the cat, but something's wrong. You like it? Pretty good? How about something warm to drink? Yeah. Okay. Mom, why is he with us? Well, honey, I told you he's a friend of mine. Yeah, I know. But why is he hanging around? He's not hanging around. I just happened to like him, and I thought you'd like him, too. Maybe. Well, anyway, it's got nothing to do with us. Lovely day, and you were terrific, Julie. Sure, just go ask Julie, Tony. I told you 20 minutes ago I was expecting a call. Listen, I got a split. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye. You've been expecting a call all day. Well, you still shouldn't hog the phone. When I grow up, nobody's going to put me through all this. See, Smarty? Mm -hmm. Hello? Hi, Tom. I'm almost out of practice. Look at these things. I'll just dry enough for you. Thanks. Hmm? <laughs> okay. Good. Well? Tell me, have you been seeing anyone? What do you mean? Well, it would just seem natural that sooner or later we'd start seeing other people. I guess that means you already have, huh? Well, I wouldn't mind if you did. Thanks a lot. Well, it's just that we are growing in different directions, and I don't see why it shouldn't be possible for us to know each other and like each other and accept each other's lives. I see. No, like a non-exclusive, non-possessive relationship. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Something about a case that reminded me of my first job at Webcor, Webcor, and Harris. Do you remember that tiny apartment we had in the big old house? Yeah, and that crazy <laughs> landlady that hated kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what was her name? Well, oh, Eastman, Mrs. Mrs. Eastman. Eastman. Yeah, and hiding David from her, <laughs> pretending his bassinet was a platter. <laughs> <laughs> and her believing it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God, you remember how cold we used to get in the winter? <laughs> we never had enough blankets, remember? Yeah. I guess things change, don't they? 
we've known each other a long time. I sure I have. by tomorrow to help you with your things. What do you mean? You're coming back home. Don't you think that should be my decision? Mm-mm. You haven't changed at all, have you? No. This is your husband speaking. You don't own me. You know, if, if you gave the slightest indication that that you understood or that our lives would be any different. Karen, don't try to be a man. Except the fact that you're a woman, honey. You just proved it. Because I went to bed with you? Don't tell me you didn't like it. Tom, I never said that I didn't love you or that I didn't miss you. That doesn't give you territorial rights over me. Karen, what if I suddenly decided to quit my job? What, what, do you, what do you think would happen? I mean, if I just suddenly stop supporting you and the kids. Only I wouldn't be allowed to do that, you see, because that's against the law. I mean, what makes it so different for you than for me? I don't understand that. You love your job. What do you know about how much I care about my job? You know, every day, I do things that 15 years ago I'd have never done. Never. But I do them because I have to. No, you don't. Yes, I do. It's called making a living. And if I stop making a living, Karen, you know, but you could have me arrested. Oh, come on. Well, I, I see it every day. Of course, right now, I mean, you don't have it so bad. I mean, you're not even paying rent. You... <laughs> Also, if you run a little low on money, you can always come to me, you know that. Who do you think paid for that car you ran away in? I mean, you break up a marriage because you just don't find your life fulfilling and meaningful. Well, Karen, who does? Well, maybe it's time that we found out what would make life fulfilling. Spare me your rhetoric, Karen. Listen, I spent 15 years getting us where we are. Now, I know what my role is. My role is to work my tail off for my family and to accept the price that I have to pay. We paid too high a price already. Well, I can accept it. Why can't you? Because I don't think we should take roles that make us both unhappy. Where are you going, Karen? Karen, don't you walk out on me again. Karen!
the cat in the catfish thing. It's kind of cute, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> isn't that what you were telling Julie at the ring? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah, where have you been? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm interested. When? <laughs> yeah. How's your shrink? You still talking about me? <laughs> well, it's up to you. What do you want to do? Okay, see you then. Bye-bye. You good at tennis? Look, Karen, we've discussed this before. All I'm interested in... Yeah, I know, I know it. A non-exclusive, non-possessive relationship. Listen to me. I'm not trying to make this difficult for you. I think you're very, very special. You know what I mean? Your buttons loose. You got a needle and thread? I'll sew it on. Wait for you to meet my boys. We can have some terrific weekends together. Look, let's just keep it in the present time, okay? What am I doing this for? Hey, tell me something. How come Freddy the Otter gets to go on all the adventures? All Martha Mole gets to do is sit around, pack lunches, and worry. Because that's why we wind up sewing buttons and stupid jackets, huh? That if we use century type and kind of place it this way, yeah. I think that would be more fun, don't you think? Yes, I like it. I like it. Good. You have done remarkably well, in spite of your recommendation from Thomas and Sons. You know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right away. You never even had ink smudges under your fingernails. Well, I figured you were worth a gamble. And you were. I have already put in a recommendation. If there is an opening for a designer, it will definitely go to you. Oh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Karen, can we talk for a minute? Yeah, sure. No, I mean privately. Okay. Listen, I'm sorry about last night. I uh, I thought about it and well, I was being selfish. That's okay, Alec. Forget it. But what I'm trying to say is I like you more than I thought I did. Thank you. I mean, I think we ought to try to work this thing out, Karen. I don't know. People change. Look, Alec, you know, I don't think... Well, I just don't know if things are going to work out with Tom and me. Tom? I don't want to talk about Tom. I want to talk about you and me. I thought you were the non-possessive type. I guess he forgot I was coming to see the two of you today, huh? You like living with Daddy? Uh-huh, he's fun. 
You mean you don't miss me too much? Sometimes at night, but I know some good stories. Mommy, I'm on a soccer team with Andy and Mark. That's terrific. When do you have practice? You supposed to be there now? Well, you better get going, huh? <laughs> Bye, Mommy. Bye. any time, did she? She speaks very highly of you. Why not? She's one of my best friends. Tell me, is she better than me? I thought you were the one who's so big on non-exclusive relationships. It's harder than I thought. growing up. It's strange to think that I'm going to be an adult, a grown-up. This is a wonderful time to be a young woman. You're very lucky. But there's so much. I mean, getting married, having children. There's nothing to be afraid of. You've got choices. As long as you believe in yourself, there's nothing you can't do or be. I'm not going out tonight. Oh, no, you don't have to stay home. No, I want to. But what about Alec? You'll understand. What about these tickets, Karen? I mean, they weren't exactly easy to come by. Yes, I know, Alec. But I don't want to leave Julie when she's running a slight fever. I'm not talking about taking you to the movies, you know. I just think it's important that I be with her tonight. Come on, Karen. How sick can she be? I mean, be liberated. Oh, come on, Alec. Don't talk to me about liberation, huh? Okay. I should have known better. Look, why don't you go anyway, just because I can't? Look, forget about it. I'll, uh, I'll get somebody else. I want you to come home. David, I can't. But mothers live with their children. If you mean coming home and being the same kind of mother I used to be, that isn't going to happen. Doesn't mean I don't love you. Well, it just seems that a family should all live together. Hmm? You can come and live with me. There's always a place for you. It's not the same. Anyway, I'm in this rock band now and I can't miss rehearsals. Oh, and if I were home, you'd expect me to drive you back and forth from rehearsal. I know you. Honey, I can't live that way anymore. Can you understand that? I guess you have stuff of your own you'd like to do. Well, maybe 
when I come into the city on weekends, I can stay with you? Oh, you better. I'd be very upset if you didn't. Well, how about this weekend? We're giving a free concert at the park. Terrific. When I'm dying to hear you play. Yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I bet you are. You know, when you were a little boy, your favorite toy was a little horn. Yeah, I remember that. It was a long time ago, huh? You've come a long way, David. Pretty soon you're going to be thinking of going to college. Yeah, I guess I'd better learn how to do my laundry. Yeah. <laughs> Mom? Are you going to work forever? I don't know. Why? Well, I sure wouldn't if I didn't have to. You already talked yourself into things you have to do? David, that isn't like you. Do you want to come back to us ever? Perhaps more than you could ever understand. Just that if I'd stayed with the family, I think it would have fallen apart, and at least this way, we have a chance. David, I just finally came to the realization that I wanted my life to mean more. When you smile, wow. Yeah, hi. You busy? Listen, um, this Sunday, the annual picnic, what do you think? I'd like to see you if you can make it. Okay. Well, if you can, fine, we'll be there. Yeah, why don't you go back to your dinner? Okay. Try to make it if you can. Come on, Julie, we're late. Coming. Honey, why are you bringing that? I want to show Danny my school project. Oh, sure. There okay. we go. <laughs> By yourself? Had a little help. Hi. Hi. Glad you came. Thanks. Neither did I.
It's you doing what you want to do, me doing what I want to do, but at least keeping the family together. What do you think? Well, I thought you wanted to be the breadwinner and me the homemaker. Halfway. All right, let's let's think about it. Okay. But will you think about it? tells me you might take an apartment. That's right. Can you afford them? I just got a raise. Oh, <laughs> big tycoon, huh? I'm sorry, that's not what I meant to say. What I meant to say was... <laughs> what I meant to say was maybe I can help you move. That'd be nice. too badly with those kids? No, we didn't. Be watching tomorrow night for another great lineup on NBM from 7.30, A Country Practice, part two of our mini-series Masada, the Sweeney, then our late movie, Apache Uprising. More great viewing just for you, Tuesday evening on NBN.